Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Angry Asian America on ISA TV. I'm Phil Yu, and we're talking about the stories from Asian America, news, happenings, current events. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jenny Yang. What's up, Jenny? This episode, we're joined by our special guest. We've got stylist Chriselle Lim of The Chriselle Factor. What's Thank up? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to finally meet you guys. Thank you for joining us. We've also got Kev Nish, Progress, J Spliff of Far East Movement. Yay! What's up, guys? Yay! Thanks for having us. I feel really like underdressed and really uncool in the presence of our guests today. Fashion, 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 fashion. All right, so for our angry story of the week, we're talking about Fresh Off the Boat. We covered this way back in episode one, so we're visiting this, but some new developments have, have been happening. Uh, the show just got picked up for ABC's lineup. Uh -huh. yeah. Yay! So we've got an Asian American family sitcom on network television for the first time in like 20 years. It's based on the memoirs of Eddie Huang, celebrity chef, about him growing up in Orlando in the 90s, right? So what do you guys feel about this? Jenny, I know you're excited. Oh my God, I am dying. I just watched the promo. I don't know if you, we just all watched mm -hmm. it. I just watched that promo like 20 times. Cause he's Asian, he loves hip hop, and he's in the 90s, which is me. <laughs> me, my American dream was to fit in. Why do all your shirts have black men on them? It's notorious B.I.G. You in the B.I.G.? Yeah, man. Come sit with us. Oh, what is this? Yeah. It's Chinese oh food. God. Get it out of here. <laughs> Ying Ming's eating worms. I think it's interesting. So one thing I've noticed is like, I post this on my blog and people are really excited. There's a lot of buzz, a lot of hype around this. People are just excited to see an Asian American family on television, right? Um, one thing I've noticed that people, some people are a little bit, have some reservations about the name of the show, Fresh Off the Boat. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. For some people, fresh off the boat might be kind of a pejorative term, like kind of insulting. It's kind of a, a term that's been floating around the Asian American community for a while, but I don't know if people are ready to have a show called Fresh Off the Boat. What do you guys think about that? I think you gotta own it, you know? I mean, if, if we can't laugh about it, then, you know, everyone else is gonna think of it offensively. I mean, if we, like, I, that's what I like about Eddie, the fact that he's, like, just so honest about everything. Like, he had this one, I think it was like, an interview with, like, CNN or something, where he, uh, he talks about how what was it? It was like, a, it was like a, a food reviewer who didn't give him any stars because they didn't feel like his food was authentic enough. Mm -hmm. And then he, his retort was the whole thing about how he grew up, you know, Taiwanese, but not just Taiwanese, he was Taiwanese-American. And that's the whole thing, right? Sometimes you want to put corn in your rice. Is that normal that people eat in Taiwan <laughs> eat corn in their rice? No, not always. But that's the way that he grew up. And that's kind of the whole thing that we're all dealing with right now too, right? Like we're only a couple of generations in with like all of our families and we're trying to build our own identity. So I think it's really awesome and I really, really hope it just stays as honest as this Vice show is. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a terminology that we all grew up with in the 90s and I think, like James said, we just have to own it and it's something that we're so familiar with that for me, I don't take it offensively at all. I mean, it's a part of me and that's how I grew up and who my family is, so I think it's awesome. Just think yeah. of it as, you know, you came off the boat looking fresh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's, it, it, it doesn't get more fresh. 90s than fresh, right? Yeah. I'm excited about how they're gonna like see all those uh, like those Asian like stereotypical jokes to a certain extent. Like even like the one that they showed in the trailer about uh, the lady in the Chinese market. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how aggressive Asian people get until you go into the market. Yeah, You're like trying to bargain, that's and they start at a hundred dollars, and then you buy it for three dollars. Like that whole thing. Like for for people to see that, it's gonna be really really fun. <laughs> From what I can tell, though, it's gonna be like. You know, there's not so many like Asian jokes as right. it is, as it's like kind of like uh, being about being in America and like acclimating to right. sort of the, the culture here, I think. I think, it, I like the fact that it's not like Asian joke, but up a punchline, you know? Right. I mean, honestly, I read the pilot and seeing the trailer, they're making fun of white people. <laughs> Like, who has seen that in America? Like, Asian people, with their perspective, yeah. right? Seeing white America or like non-Asian America. So. It's like crazy, it's crazy. It's so, it's so, it's gonna be so fresh and original for what mainstream America has seen. First of all, I want it to be good though. I mean, like, yeah. we really want it to be good because you don't want to support something that's gonna be, you know, that's yeah. kind of whack, right? But um, that, that brings me to another point, it's like, should we, I know, we're really excited about it, should we support something just because it's Asian American? And um, it, it's kind of dangerous, I think, to put all your hopes and dreams into like this one show. Yeah. You know, and that, unfortunately it's because of the fact that there are so few shows like this, mm -hmm. 
it's easy to sort of put all, all these expectations into it. I don't know. What do you feel about that? It feels like that's a double-edged sword with uh, putting out anything that's creatively, you know, uh, creative content to an extent that it's like the expectations of maybe what mainstream America might be and the expectations of your own people. Um, I don't know if you guys go through that, but we definitely go through that with music. It's like, yo, there's, there's a certain amount of people that are like, why don't you get more political? Why don't you represent the community? There's another portion of the community that go, well, representing the community is actually being out there and being seen and maybe just doing it how you grew up doing it. I think it's important that the show not only speaks to the Asian American, because we could get excited as a community, but I think it's also an opportunity for the outsiders to really understand the community. So hopefully the show will be able to kind of open the doors for the outsiders as well, not just for the insiders to get really excited about. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, is it fair to have a show like this represent Asian America for, for like, for, say for outsiders, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like it's really sort of, uh, that's a lot for one thing, one sort of product to bear, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I imagine you guys have felt this though, like you kind, of, kind of touched upon this, but I feel like you guys have also been criticized for not repping hard enough for Asian Americans, probably, right? Totally. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? What, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what, what, what did you hear? Please, it's like you no, know. No, I'm, I'm totally just like. Yeah. I'm just guessing. Because it's true. Because you guys, because you guys are one of the few music acts that have made it in. So you know, out there in the mainstream, and so um, I, I feel like you might have to toe the line of balancing after, like, do I have to rep hard, do I have to dial it back, so that we can be appealing to mainstream? Like, there's, I, I, I'm, I feel like it's probably sort of analogous to what the show might be going through creatively. You know, it, it's definitely very relevant for what we're going through right now. Um, yeah, you, we uh, during our whole career, the main critique we got from our own community was. We don't feel that brainless party music should represent our community. That's not our first. We wanted Eminem. You know what I mean? We went through the draft. We wanted Eminem. We got Far East Movement. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn it. But, and for us too, and we never, you know, it's one of those things with, that's the thing with creative content. You just make what you love, what you feel, and what you know. And that's us, you know? If any Saturday night, you're gonna see these three dudes at the club. You know, we weren't, the most like prolific, uh, socially conscious people, you know. We, you know, this is, and we're proud of, you know. But one thing we decided to do that we felt would be the statement was keep the name, keep the name Far East Movement. When you get to the major label, they think, oh, that's the devil, and they're gonna want to change everything about you. And maybe people brought that up. You might want to change your name. You know, Far East Movement, whoa, that's a lot, that's like, it's a whole lot. But that was a statement, we'll say, let's do this though. Let's make music where when someone hears it, they don't know who made it. They just think that that belongs on the radio, it's brainless, it's whatever, but that, that, that sounds like it should be on the radio. And then when they discover who made it, they're like, and that happens at the shows, they're like, yo, I came to the show. No idea. Now I right. get it. Far yeah. East oh. movie. Yeah, oh. no, no, no. Oh. I, I wanted to give Chriselle a chance to talk about. I mean, I, I know that um, you know, fashion is fashion, and I don't know if people will always look at you know who is talking about it. But I was wondering if, if you, you being Asian has been you know maybe helped or hampered sort of your um, the way people perceive like what you have to say about about uh, you know, fashion and what you talk about. I actually think being Asian in the fashion community, especially on the editorial side, it gives me kind of a benefit because right now, a lot of Chinese designers, a lot of Korean designers are really up and coming. They're the most well-respected. So I honestly think that being Asian actually has helped me um, kind of break through the doors of mainstream fashion. So. But then I grew up on the other side where I was the only Asian in my high school. So it was kind of weird kind of um, accepting that being Asian is cool when I moved to LA. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but it's helped me a lot. Yeah, when one thing though, I mean, what's, what's up with the mom's accent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Could have went to a couple more ESO classes. Come on. Come on. Oh, Come on. See, Someone had to say it. You know what? Yeah. That I, I call self hatred. Yeah. You yeah. know what though? I, I, oh. I feel like I feel like we have to sort of own the accent. Yes. I feel like no we gotta own it. No self hatred. Like, how far is that from how your mom actually sounds? That's true. 
You know what I mean? Like, we, my know, mind does all. My mom oh, actually so wins a lot of arguments. Like, sometimes, like, she'll go on the phone with, like, when we have, like, a crazy bill, like, a phone bill or something. And when she talks in her broken English accent, like, the other the person on the line can't actually get anything across. Like, she don't want to let you understand. <laughs> so, by the end of it, we get, like, mad credits. <laughs> she's coming back. She's doing a little dance. There's an angry Asian lady on the phone, <laughs> just like, no, I don't understand. F5. <laughs> All right, well, I want to give a huge thank you to our guest, uh, Chriselle FM. Tell us uh, anything you want to plug and also tell us what's making you angry this week. All right, so make sure to check out my channel, Chriselle Lim, and also my blog, thechriselfactor.com. Um, we update daily uh, as far as fashion tips, fashion outfits, inspiration, and as far as what got me angry this week, um, for all you fashion girls out there that aspire to be fashionistas, do not wear six inch heels when you are on the job because you won't get anything done. That got me really angry this week. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so what's up? We're the Far East Movement again. And uh, we have, we've been working on a new project, new album. Uh, a big shout out to Power 106. They've been starting to play our new song, Fanging to the Curb. Um, what's making us angry? This is actually pretty relevant. Uh, we, we recently just saw this like, I don't know, I don't want to say like blatant racism, but like we, we put out, so we did a little like social experiment, I guess you could say online. We had a video that was really just catered to like the masses and, and YouTube, and um, we put that out for the song called The Illest, and then we thought, well, let's put out a completely different video just kind of representing the neighborhood and throwing it out there. Same exact song, nothing's different. We're just gonna show people like how we really live. And the, the, the type of hate off of just, oh, this song sucks, and compared to the other video, was like, oh, this song is cool when it's catered to like the masses. Oh, you know, there's this, it was way more diverse, but the other one was just representing Koreatown. A lot of Asians, a lot of people from the community. Um, us, just normal, no, no character stuff. Just kept it real. And, and the same exact song, you really saw the difference of like, this song sucks, this song's good. Huh. And so that was kind of like, whoa, that's interesting to us. Then what really threw us off is there was a Doritos commercial where it was just the song, not know us, just a bunch of different artists and stuff. And people, 100% positive feedback. This song's great. So it led us to believe, wow, is it that because there's a different visual and maybe it's not what they're used to seeing, they completely hear the song differently and don't like it. And we never really, I mean, it's weird how this late in our career, we see it so blatantly. So when we thought things changed. So that makes us angry. Let's change that shit. Shout out to Studio 5A for letting us shoot Angry Asian America here. And of course, shout out to our Angry Artist of the Week, Kina Granis. Lovely music. She just had a new album drop, so check out her album. That's it for Angry Asian America. Be sure to subscribe to ISA TV for future updates. And check out angryasianman.com to see what's going on in Asian America. And as always, stay angry.